Yo, what up? Welcome back to another quick flutter tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how we can code up this nice, sleek, minimal weather app by reading some API data. Now, just to have a clear picture of what we're about to do, I drew up a nice little diagram for us. So let's start off with our phone. Now, the first thing is we need to get the location of this device. And then we're going to give that information to a weather service class, which we'll create. And this class will handle most of our operations. So once we get the device's location, we're going to give that city name to the API, which is this openweathermap.org website. And then that will return us the weather for that city. And just before we give that to our phone directly, we're going to go through a weather model just so that we can get the relevant information from the weather. So I want to know the temperature and the conditions of the weather. And so we'll give that information to our app. And on a high level, this is what we're about to do. Go to this website, openweathermap.org, and we're going to get our API key from here. So all you need to do is just to sign in using your email and you'll be assigned a free API key. So we're going to need this key later on. Now I've opened up a brand new Flutter project and the first thing we'll do is to open up the terminal and let's add in some packages that we'll need. So the first one is the HTTP package. Then we need flutter pub add geolocator. And also geocoding. And finally, let's add in the Lottie package as well. So this one's going to be for some nice animations. So what we just did, if you didn't know, is if you go to your popspec.yaml, this is the packages that we added in. Let's start coding. Now I'm going to delete everything below the main function just to create this from scratch. So I'm going to have my material app. And for the home, let's go to our weather page, which we haven't created. So I'm just going to create this in a new folder called pages just to keep our code nice and clean. And then let's come back to our main dot dot just to import this. And sweet, what you should have is just a blank scaffold. So this is where we'll begin. Now, the very first thing is to create a weather model. So if we just create a quick class here, if we think about any particular weather, let's say we want three things. I want to know the city name. I want to know the temperature and also maybe the main condition, like if it's cloudy or sunny or whatever. So we're going to require this when we create a weather. And then we need a quick method here just to deal with the JSON file. So when we get our data from our API at OpenWeather, we're going to use this to sort of decode the information. For the city name in the field of the JSON is going to be name. And then the temperature, we want to convert this one to a double. And also the main condition is going to be in the weather field. And then main. So this is our basic weather model. One last thing we want to do is to create a weather service. So this one will help us fetch the data. So starting with the base URL. So this one, just make sure to copy exactly what I have. It's just the open weather map website pretty much. And then we need to have our API key. And then let's create a future method here called get weather. And let's accept a parameter called city names. Now this is where our HTTP package comes into play. At the top, just import it as HTTP. And then now we can access the URLs from the web. So for this one, I'm just going to copy this in. So make sure to copy exactly how I have it. And basically what it is, is we're just going to the base URL, which is the open weather website. And then we're going to go to the specific city with our API key. So then we can just check this response. And so if we have a response, then we can go to our weather and then decode that information. And otherwise we have some error. Cool. Now we just need one more method here, which is another future for getting the current city. So I want the app to automatically know where the device is. So to do this, we have to ask for permission from the user. 
Let's check the permission and also if it's denied, let's ask for permission. And then so once we got the permission from the user, let's fetch the current location. And then we're going to convert the location into a city name. Okay, sweet. So let's say the position. So we can use this to get our current position. Let's say the desired accuracy is high. And then we have to do a little bit of place mark work. And give it our positions, latitude and longitude. Cool. Now the information I really want is just the city's name. So you can say the locality. Cool. Now I just want to return the city, but if it's null, which is what the question mark question mark means, if it's null, just return a blank string. Okay, so we have these two methods that we can now come to our weather page and let's display it in our UI now. So the first thing is we need our API key and let's just have a quick method to fetch the weather and then maybe later we'll do the weather animations too. Let's create our weather service and in this parameter, this is where you have to give your specific API key, the one that's free on open weather. So I'll put that one in for my one a bit later on. And then let's create a weather object here. And let's just have a quick method here to fetch the weather. Again, the first thing I need to do is just to get the current city. And then we'll get the weather for this city. So for the city name, if we go to our weather service, we can access our get current city method. And then let's try to get the weather for that city. And if that's all good, then let's set the state and let's just update our weather object. And also if we have any errors, let's just print it to the console. Cool. So at the top, we need to give our API key. Let's just make sure not to forget that. So I'm going to paste my one in that we got from the start of the video. And let's just have an initial state. So when this app starts up, let's fetch the weather. Cool. Now let's display this using our UI. So I'm going to use a big column. And I just want to display the city name and then the temperature for now. So if we go to our weather object, let's just display the city name. And if it's null, then let's just say like loading city. And for the temperature. This should be a double, like a decimal number. So I'm just going to round it to the nearest integer. And I'm just going to add this little degree Celsius sign. Cool. So you can see it's there in the corner. I'm going to actually center this column and also the alignment I'm going to center as well. Sweet. So you can see right now it's just loading and there's no temperature. And this is because we have to do a little bit of extra work for the permission. So for the Android, if we go to the app source main, you can go to the Android manifest. And then at the top here, we just want to paste this bit of code to these two lines just to get the permission. So make sure to copy what I did. And that's for Android. For iOS, go to runner and go to this info.plist. And at the top here, we also want to just add in this NS location when in use usage description. So you just need to add that little thing in. Cool. So I'm just going to save everything and just to just for good luck, I'm just going to kill the app and restart it. And you can see there's our app asking us for permission to get our location. Sweet. So just test this on your device. It should get your exact location and it's showing the temperature. Cool. Now just to make this a little bit more fun and aesthetic, I'm going to add in a animation. So if you go to Lottie files, you can get some nice easy animations here. So I'm just going to search for weather and it looks like this guy has some cool weather animations that are pretty simple. So let's say we want the top four, like the sunny, a rainy, a cloudy and a thunder one. So you can have more if you want, but I'll just show you how to do it with a few of these ones. So if you click on any of them that you want, you can click download and get that JSON file. And so here I've got my project and then also the animation I just downloaded. I'm just going to rename this to make it more easier to remember. So I downloaded the cloud animation. 
And let's create a new folder here called Assets and just drag all of your animations in here. So go to the Lottie website and download whichever ones you want. I'm going to bring in the four that I said I'm going to use. So the Cloud, Rain, Sunny, and the Thunder. And so in the actual project, and just drag the folder in. Sweet, and then if we come back to our code, we have to tell it that we're going to bring in some assets. So go to your pubspec.yaml again. And we're going to scroll down to the assets and just uncomment this and specify where you placed it. So we placed it in the assets folder. Sick. Now, if we come back to our column in the middle, let's just put in the animation. So if you start typing Lottie, you can import it and specify where we placed our assets. So let's say assets cloud.json and you can see there's the animation. We've got the sunny thunder and the rain. Awesome. Now the animations are coming up fine. What we want is we want the animations to match the weather, right? So you can actually also get the condition, the weather condition. If I say main condition here, you can see right now it's clouds. All right. So depending on this main condition, let's display the appropriate animation. So let's come to the top and fill out this one last method called get weather animation and we're just going to accept a main condition as a parameter. If the main condition is null, let's just return the sunny animation as a default. And so we're going to use a switch statement to deal with the different cases. Okay, and so if we look at the main condition and we just reduce it down all to lower case. So I looked at the main conditions that you can have from our open weather API. And these are the possible ones we can get. So we can get clouds, mist, smoke, haze, dust, fog. So for those ones, I'm just going to simply return clouds. For rain, drizzle, and you also get shower rain, I'm just going to return the rainy one. If we have thunderstorm, then we have our the thunder animation. And then lastly, if it's clear, then just return the sunny one. And by default, we'll return sunny. So I'm going to use just the four animations, but if you want, you can go back and try to find animations for all of the different conditions. But I think the four that we have can represent most of these. Also, now if we come back to our UI where we give the animation, instead of specifying just a specific animation, let's now get weather animation and we can give it the main condition that we have. So currently we can see it's clouds. So hopefully if I save this, we get the cloudy animation. Sweet. And that's it. That's the basic functionality on how to get the API data and create a very simple weather app. So now you can just decorate this up to your liking. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, just comment below and I'll try to help you out. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.